Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to beautiful ross Aid Stadium, a picture-perfect early November day. Temperature's going to be in the mid-50s today, not a cloud in the sky, and it's just a perfect day for football. Tim Newton along with Pete Quinn and Kelly Kitchell. Good to be back home for the Boilermakers after a good road win last week at Nebraska. And Pete, we were just talking before we came on. It's time for a home win. Lost two in a row here at ross Aid Stadium. Can't have three. No, you can't, and it's, uh, it's, it's the next turning point for this program. Jeff took over a program that was obviously in major, major disarray. I think he's done an outstanding job. I think this season's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'd like to have that Michigan State game, or the Minnesota game over. Um, but the only game that I was disappointed in this year was Wisconsin, which I had the same feelings I had against Wisconsin. I feel really good about today. But this is, this is a, a critical game. Uh, I was more worried three weeks ago about playing Nebraska on the road because I thought they were much better than their record indicated when you mm -hmm. looked at when you delved into it and really looked at the details. And then uh, I felt more comfortable about this game than Nebraska. Last week was a huge win. Last week was a, a major win uh, for Purdue football. I still feel real good today. I think Michigan State is uh, a very, very talented team. They've got a lot of positive things. Great kicker, great punter, uh, arguably the best running back in college football and Kenneth Walker. Uh, good, strong uh, quarterback, two great receivers, one Marinette play. That, mm -hmm. That'll be an interesting take. But I just feel good about this game. I think we mm -hmm. match up good, and they're worst in the Big Ten and pass defense, and we're pretty good at passing. So we'll see what happens, but it's going to be a good day today. You look at this Michigan State team, Kitch, 2-5 and five last year under first-year coach in Mel Tucker. The expectations coming out of East Lansing were low. A lot of people had them picked dead last in the Big Ten East yeah. this year. 41 new players, 20 out of the transfer portal. Kenneth Walker is one of those. This is proof that in this age of free agency in college football, you can get better a whole lot faster than you used to be able to. Well, Mel Tucker took the, he said, I'm not going to build my program with, you know, recruiting high school kids. I'm going to go out and win now. He, did, he didn't want to wait three or four years. He wanted to win now, and, and uh, he found a way to do it. And, you know, you can, you can go about this different ways. And this is the way he went, and it's the success is showing right now. And it is unbelievable. When you look through there two deeps, I mean, yeah, you got 20 kids that are, that are I think 17 are major contributors to this team out of those 20. And um, it's just unbelievable what they've done in that transfer portal to, to make them contenders. And, yeah, you got Kenneth Walker the third that was – you know, it, you know, he's a really good player last year. He goes there now. He's probably they're talking about Heisman for him, and and so it's it's just it's really really it's really unbelievable the turnaround because they went from a team that had zero touchdowns from their running back a year ago to their first play of the season this year. Yeah. They had they had Kenneth Walker the third got in on the ground. So uh, and he's just been explosive ever since. Yeah, right. Really. He's had 14 touchdowns total, yeah. five against Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's ever done that to Michigan in 150 years. Nobody's done that to Michigan. You, you, you wondered coming into this game, regardless of the outcome of the Michigan-Michigan State game, can the Spartans get up two weeks in a row? Because clearly that was a huge emotional game. It was a huge physical game for them. They won it. The question is, can they come back to earth now? They've ranked number three this week in the college football playoff system. They're number five in the AP poll. Pete, will, will this team, will the Michigan State be able to get back and get grounded in time for today's game? No, Purdue's going to win running away, and uh, they're not going to be able it, it, All joking aside, that, that was kind of a joke. Uh, they've been <laughs> obviously focused on that, and they've got a perfect case study. They said Iowa beat Penn State. They right. were all excited. They're in the top two, and then Purdue came in and beat them. So they, they had something to point to. So I think the players are going to come out. I think one of the keys to the game today is who comes out hot first. Yeah. Saying that, Michigan State's kind of an outlier. There, there's, when you look at this game, it's, it's, we've been doing this for 29, 30 years. This game is the strangest game when you look at the stats. Undefeated, 8-0 Michigan State, dead last in pass defense. Mm -hmm. uh, horrible at third down conversions. Time of possession is dead last. I mean, you look at some of those stats and you yeah. think, these guys must not be good. And they've been outgained in half their wins. Yeah. I, I mean, Michigan uh, had 552 yards against them. Michigan State had 395. And, and somehow Michigan State won that game. They, they had less yards than Indiana, Western Kentucky, and Nebraska. Nebraska had 442 yards, they had 254. But they, they win. 
and winning is contagious. So the kids come out here with confidence. They assume they're going to win. They play hard. But if Purdue can jump on them early and, and kind of hit them in the mouth early, it'll be interesting to see how they, uh, how they respond to that. Well, if you look, Kitch, at the numbers for Michigan State coming in, they've outscored their opponents 63-30 to 30 in the first quarter and 100-62 to 62 in the second quarter. Their formula is get a lead, hand the ball off to Walker, and let your defense take the rest of it. That's been a formula most of the year, but it didn't happen last weekend against Michigan. Yeah. I mean, I think out of those 30, what was it, 20 of them or so were in the first half. So they, uh, yeah, it, it's really interesting that they, they showed a different side of themselves than what we had seen all year, that they were able to come from behind and not get away from what they do. They still hand the ball off. They didn't panic, and they still did, did what they do. So that, that was the interesting and kind of, a little bit of a concerning if you're a Boilermaker fan that they were able to come back from a from a deficit like that. But you're right, Michigan Michigan doesn't have the passing attack that Purdue does either. They want to pound the ball and they want to they want to do that. They don't they don't have the prolific passer. They don't have David Bell on their roster, you know, and all the weapons that Purdue has that can once they get a lead, they can continue to put pressure on you and try to keep them off the field. By the way, let us know on Facebook where you're watching from. We have somebody from Mason, Ohio, so uh, I know we've got people all over the place. Uh, let us know where you're watching. If you have a question for us, uh, we've got a few minutes left before we go on the air today. So we'll uh, get you ready for Michigan State and Purdue. Do you have sunglasses on? I Do you have them? Yeah. Well, I, not, I think if, if, right now. if our play-by-play -play guys wearing sunglasses. The oh, reason I kept my sunglasses I on, I want to show the people how there bright the day is and how bright the future is. <laughs> how about that? Well, I'm gonna, you're, you're our play-by-play oh, -play guy. I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> They look at the, one of the numbers we'll be looking at, one of the keys to the game today, Michigan State 25 quarterback sacks on the season. That's second in the Big Ten, 10th in the nation. Yes, they're last in pass defense, but you've got to have time to throw the football. That's a big key today. Yeah, and, and when we talked about Nebraska last week, which I'm going to say it again, I've already said it once, that was a huge win. That was a very, very big win. I did not feel comfortable going into that football game. But Nebraska had a huge competitive edge they got to watch the film for the Wisconsin game. And Wisconsin loaded up the box. Uh, they just beat David Bell to within an inch of his life, tried to keep him out of the game, and that shut down our offense. Somehow, Jeff Brom figured out a way to gain 100 plus yards rushing, and we were able to win that football game. I, I like our chances with Jeff Brom. I know what they're gonna do. They're gonna do what Wisconsin did to us. They're gonna attempt to do what Wisconsin did to us. But I think that uh, Jeff Brown's got it figured out, and I, I love it when, when the defensive coaches, Jeff Brown, the offensive coaches, when, when they put together the game plan, they're right more than they're wrong. I think they struggle against Wisconsin, but that's literally the only game they struggled in this year. And, I, and I'll, I'll kind of piggyback. If you get Jeff Brown in a, in a room and, and really just talk football, he, he will agree that's one of the bigger wins Purdue, he's had at Purdue. I know we've had yeah. some big ones with Iowa and Ohio State and those. But for them to go in there against a team that was very hungry, desperate for a win, and has played everybody they've played within a one score. Well, yeah, they're down a touchdown to Ohio State at the half right. today. Yeah. And so, I mean, he that I, I don't think, uh, Pete, you're saying it, it. It's not understated how big of a win that was for our program. And I'm hopeful that our kids understand that, too, that, that they played at a level that is higher than we played in a long time. That's, that's the next step for this program. Uh, they, they, Jeff has taken us... He took over a program that was in dire straits, immediately won more games than anybody thought. Everybody in the country thought he should be the next coach for whatever opening there was. He, he was loyal to Purdue. He stayed here. The fan base needs to understand that what he has done is incredible. Yeah. And this year, COVID didn't count. The year of COVID was IU was better than Michigan and Penn State. That, that, that was just throw that season out. The year before, we had 20 starters miss at least four games. He has had as much bad luck as a coach could have, and now it seems to be, this year, seems to be coming together. And we've had injuries like everybody else. In mm -hmm. fact, Michigan State, I'm sure you're going to talk about it, they've got two elite receivers. One of them may or may not play, and that would be a big difference maker. But everybody has injuries, but it seems like Purdue's injuries are starting to come back in the fold. It's good seeing Xander out there. It, we'll see him again today. Yeah. I think that all the bad luck he's had over the last two years, maybe he'll get a little bit of good luck this year. Uh, hello to Taylorsville, Kentucky. Again, keep letting us know on Facebook where you're watching from. The, the player that uh, Pete's been referring to, Jalen Naylor, 
who uh, coming into the game today has 31 catches for six touchdowns, averaging almost 19 yards a catch. Uh, he was injured in the Michigan game, did not finish that game. The indications we've gotten are he will not play today. Uh, we don't have that confirmed. On the Boilermaker side, we're waiting. Payne Durham today is a game time decision after getting nicked up last week against Nebraska. Do not expect to see Kadron Jenkins at the defensive end slot aside or opposite George Karloftis, but Demarcus Mitchell is back today. Greg Long is expected back. So, uh, Pete, you mentioned the reinforcements are coming, and you come into November, you've got some pretty tough games. Uh, you got Ohio State staring you in the face next week, and then two really important games against Northwestern and Indiana to finish. You want to have your best players out on the field right now. You, you do, and that's it's, it's almost college football's almost become like the NFL. At the end of the season, the teams that are favored are the ones that are the most healthy because it's a long season. It's a violent game, and the speed and the size of, of players today, you see an awful lot of injuries. But Purdue – has has they've got a few but everybody's got them this is the least amount of injuries i've seen at purdue in three or four years so hopefully uh hopefully they'll have a good day today i think that i we certainly have the talent one thing i when i watch purdue football now that's been different than in years past years past you would look and say you know that guy might make the nfl you know that that player's mm -hmm. good enough then you get a drew Brees or a mike allstott you know they're going to make it but you didn't have a lot yeah we got a lot of kids on this team that have a chance to play on Sundays, and we got a great mixture, in my opinion, of youth and senior leadership. You, you can't, you got a, a person like Jackson Anthrop that's here for six years, but then you got a couple of freshman linemen, linemen that are getting some uh, meaningful playing time that the future for Purdue looks very, very bright, which is why Tim and I are in shades right now, and Kelly forgot his. <laughs> Minor dance there. I'll I'll be on the sideline and actually yes, meet him. Yes, you will. This is true. So, this is true. And I'll be holding on. By the way, uh, watching today from Parker, Colorado, Anna, Texas, Ohio, Noblesville, Indiana, uh, Ashland, Kentucky. We did get a question. Oh, and Zurich. I assume that's Zurich, Switzerland. I appreciate you watching, but the fact that you're watching Pete Quinn, Kelly Kitchell, and me rather than the Alps is a little bit concerning for us. So. Well, that seems normal to me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sense. Uh, Corey Trice, the question was, is he available? No, Corey is out for the season. Injured a knee uh, earlier this year, coming during the bye week. Injured his knee in practice and will not be back. Will be back next season, but he will not be playing today. So, uh, Kitch, let's talk about the Boilermakers and what they did last week against Nebraska. We had talked earlier about the fact that they couldn't move the ball at all against Wisconsin. A big reason was they couldn't run it. They ran it last week, although not in the conventional way that you would expect. There was a lot of creativity, I think, on that offensive side running the ball. And you, you were, we were doing the post-game interview with Jeff Brom, and, and I, I thought one of his comments was really interesting. He said, I, I had to commit myself to calling run plays. He goes, even when they weren't working or it wasn't perfect and things just weren't absolutely how I wanted, I had to keep committing and keep telling myself, we have got to call run plays because you have to have some balance. Wisconsin, all they did was load the box. They went, they beat up our receivers, and they, you know, and then and shut. They, they they were able to shut down our pass game, and they could stop the run with just a few guys in there. He said, "I have to commit to it," and he committed to it. And you can see we had, we finally rushed for over 100 yards, but it did. It took Jackson Anthrop in the backfield. It took it took you know we saw David Bell back there one time. We saw we saw King. We saw Xander. And what was funny was our run game. It was as you guys will kind of on the sideline. I. I got a good feel for this. Xander, when he first came out on his first run, he looked a little tentative. His second run, he looked a little bit better. You know, he had a little confidence. The third time he carried it, he tried to, he tried to leap over it. <laughs> yes. And yes. then he did that, and he got up, he's like, oh, my leg's not broken. I must be pretty good. <laughs> then, then all of a sudden, it was like it was on. You know, he was like, okay, I'm good to go. And uh, it was, I think that was a big emotional um, up lift for the running back room for the offense for the team to have a guy like that come out and I mean he 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 is a he's a leader on the on the team and for him to be back in the mix and back with it I think was big for the team. Xander on offense to me is George Karloftis on defense when you look at his stats they don't blow you away you know he, he doesn't have a lot of sacks he doesn't have a lot of tackles for loss he's solid mm -hmm. but he is such a dominant player Xander's numbers last week wouldn't impress anyone. 11 carries, 22 yards or something like that. But he was such a presence. 
and just having him out there and just the respect the defenses have to give him. I'm looking for him to have a big game today. Well, you remember on the touchdown run he had, he was hit at about the three yard line. Yes. Basically, his own blocker was blocked back into him. Yes. He bounced off that and uh, was able to score. That was a big touchdown early in the game. Uh, let's catch up here. Uh, we got Ashland, Kentucky, Bucyrus, Ohio, Decatur, Indiana, and Wildemar, California. Uh, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we talked before the Wisconsin game. We said, boy, the Boilermakers are due to win this because it's been forever. Well, you know, they're kind of due to beat Michigan State. Yeah, Purdue yeah. has lost eight straight to the Spartans. You have to go all the way back to 2007, a game in East Lansing. Purdue won at 17-15 on a field goal by his only field goal as a Boilermaker, Casey Welch. Yeah. Came in because uh -huh. our kicker at the time was struggling. If I remember, it was at like an 18 or 19-yard field goal, but from a difficult angle. Casey knocked it through, the only kick he ever made as a Boilermaker, and the only one he ever, ever attempted, and it was a game winner against Michigan State. Kitsch, those are the, those are the stories that dreams were made of, and I'm sure That's that right. as time goes on, in his mind and in his stories, that might become a 50-yard field goal. It may be from, with wind going crossways <laughs> and, the, and the, the goal post shaking the whole time. It might be that, you know, the older you get, the better you were for sure. But no, you know, what, you know, I won the Heisman, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 We all know that. Multiple, yeah. so, multiple Heisman. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Archie but, Griffin. But what's interesting about it, it's been a while since, you know, Purdue's been, you know, with Michigan State, that's a, that's a weird one. But we just haven't played them very yeah. much. That's, yeah. that's the difference between us, the Wisconsin and the Michigan State. It's not that like, you just haven't had opportunities. And then the few opportunities that we've had to play them, um, we haven't, haven't fared very well. But. What I love is that Michigan State's going to see something that they haven't seen in a long, long time, especially in East Lansing. They have not seen sunshine up there because I don't know that I've ever <laughs> been up in East Lansing where the sun has shone up there. So it's going to be bright and sunny today. That here, so that might really mess with them. That message brought to you by the East Lansing Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> I, I will, too. If we got time, we got a couple of minutes. I got to tell one fun story about Michigan State. And as long as we've been doing this, you always have stories about different schools. But when I was a Jim Young's first year, I was a redshirt freshman, and our Jim Young's first year, we struggled, went five and six. Next three years, uh, had great seasons, went to bowl games, top 20, top 10. But we were playing Michigan State uh, his first season. And we're, we're out there, and, and I saw the greatest wide receiver I ever saw in my life. I said, this, this guy is just not the best wide receiver, best football player I've ever seen. And I made a comment to one of my teammates. I said, that guy's unbelievable. And I said, he's, he's going to be one of the greatest players in the NFL. He goes, no, no. He's smiling because he knows what I'm talking about. I know who about. he is. <laughs> and he goes, uh, no, he's going to play baseball. I saw oh, that's a bunch of bull. He's just saying that to negotiate his contract. That guy's a football player. That receiver is Kirk Gibson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Kirk Gibson was so dominant as a football player, consensus All-American wide receiver. And that guy ends up uh, playing baseball, and I thought he was doing that totally as a, yep. a sham to negotiate hmm. his football contract. Well, the but I think he made the right decision. The first yeah. two touchdowns I ever saw in ross Aid Stadium were the next year, and he scored both of them because yeah. they were up on you 14 nothing at the half that year. But what was the final? 21-14. Or 21-14. It's sad that we can remember that, isn't it? It's, it's kind of, it's, kind of, it's both sad and happy, yeah, right? Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, by the way, Gabe Hendricks, and, and I'm just going to read this verbatim because I don't want this paraphrased. Pete Quinn is such a stud. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read that with no further Gabe, comments. I don't know who you are, but I appreciate that. <laughs> Tell that to Susan Quinn because she would argue with you. By the way, you know, we talk all the time about college football being a, every week's a different season. How about today in Minnesota? With a minute to play in the third quarter, Illinois leads Minnesota 14 to nothing. It's uh, Big Ten's Big Ten. You know, anybody can beat anybody, and it's today is. <laughs> were you, and I want your honest opinion, both of you, were you a little bit surprised at the, and you're not supposed to talk about point spreads, but you look at them. Were you surprised by that? I, I was a little bit, although, you know, in Vegas, the uh, we're, what we're told is they set the point spreads to maximize betting. Right, I understand. I would that. guess that they've probably seen some action on that line this week. Yeah, but yeah, I was a little bit surprised. Michigan State is about a three-point favorite today, and, uh, and it stayed that way. And it stayed that way, yeah. which means that they set the line exactly where it should have been set. Yeah, and, and I, I was sides. a little bit stunned. I, and I don't understand betting. I, I don't bet, but I would thought eight and zero, oh, you know, third in the in the playoff rankings, uh, six overall, I think. Yeah. And 
worth three point dogs. Yeah. That that just kind of surprised me. By the way, we had a question here from my good friend Bob Nicholson. Uh, is Walker as good as Eric Allen? Now this is going to take people back. Eric the Flea Allen, who actually has the Ross Aid Stadium record here for most rushing yards in a right. game, 350. Oh. 350, not 250, 350. I don't know how close Jonathan Taylor came on that because I think he just scored another touchdown I think in the he game just against us. Got over 300. He was kind of a slacker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but let me just say, they're both pretty good. Uh, Walker, again, was not a starting running back at Wake Forest, and that's one of the reasons he's here today. He was told by the people there that he didn't fit their system. Well, Wake Forest is undefeated. Michigan State is undefeated, so I guess that's, that thing worked out for both sides. Walker is going to change college football. Um, there are certain schools, Clemson's one of them, that didn't buy into this transfer portal. Yep. They said, no, we're going, to, we're going to stick, we're going to recruit kids out of high school, we're going to build a team. And then you see Michigan State with, I think you guys said 20, 20 transfers. 20, 20 and, and 41 and, new players altogether. And 14 playing meaningful minutes, uh, a lot of them starting, and they're 8-0. Yeah. After after a really tough season, so it's going to make a lot of schools rethink their strategy about transfers. Yeah. I hate the rule. I think it's a stupid rule, and I think uh, the NCAA is going to regret it. I think it's going to hurt college football. But right now, it's the rule, and Purdue's benefited from that rule. Yes, they have. Uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, checking in, and we hopefully will get another top ten win. That's that's the plan, Kyle. Let's see if, if we can make that plan work. All right, let's get back to. Our picks to click. We've got a couple minutes left. And Kitch, we'll start with you this time. Give me somebody on both sides of the ball that's going to be a difference maker today. Well, you know I love the offensive line. And I thought I thought that, that they played better last week, but they were playing without a, one of their starters, and that was uh, Greg Long. I'm hoping that Greg Long back will help them continue on this this week, and he can be a, a, a force up front, and, and we'll be able to run the ball and, and keep – Keep Aiden clean. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Greg Long just because he drank a beer on the field too. So I mean that's. Did you wear the T-shirt today? Well, I, I didn't wear it today. I had it on this week. It was in, it was in dirty clothes. So. I wear it to bed. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with Greg Long just because just because I like him, um, and and I'm hoping that he comes back and can be a difference maker for the, for this game. Um, defensively, again, I, you know, Pete was talking about guys that we have that are NFL guys before coming in Jalen Graham wasn't really on anybody's list. He's on NFL. my list. He now he's on everybody's yes. list. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jeff Brown said when when the NFL scouts come in to watch practice he gets more questions about Jalen Graham and gets more attention for him than maybe anybody else. They already know about George but anybody else on that defense they're asking about Jalen Graham um, and I think that's a tribute to the coaching staff and what, what they've done on the defensive side this year but I'm going to go with Jalen Graham because he's going to have to be able to set the edge and do some things and tackle in space of Kenneth Walker. And they've got a very talented tight end in Connor Hayward, who was yeah. a running back and is a big part of their offense. So he's done a great job this year, Jalen, guarding other tight ends. Yes. And yeah, he'll have another he'll challenge do just today. fine. Mr. Quinn. Uh, well, first of all, I want to just go a little bit further with Jalen Graham. I met him the first time a couple of years ago. He, he looks like, he talks like, he plays like my teammate and one of my best friends. Keena Turner. He is Keena Turner reincarnated. And of course, Keena had a prolific, incredible career with the San Francisco 49ers, has four championship rings, and was the leader of one of the best teams in the history of the NFL. They're the same guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I talk to Jalen, I talk to Keena, I, they're the same guy. Uh, I'm going to go with two guys that uh, will surprise you because uh, they're guys we don't talk a lot about, but they, they've got talent, and I think they're, uh, they're key to today's win. On offense, I'm going with David Bell, and on defense, George Karloftis. You, you stole me. I thought I was going to be able to steal both of those guys today. I'm, I'm going to take them, but, but here's why. I, I say that in jest because, obviously, we talk about them a lot, as we should. Big games, and this, will, this is a big game by definition. The big guys, the big stars have to be stars. And if Karloftis and Bell have great days today, we win. All right, now you can, you're making me you're making me rejigger well, my phone. Have it easy I thought, you? yeah, I thought it was going to be good night. See ya. Uh, give me uh, Marvin Grant. Marvin Grant playing against his home state school, Detroit. I think he's going to be all fired up and ready. 
The one thing about Michigan State, you're going to see they're going to crowd the line of scrimmage and make it tough to run, but you can throw the ball over them. I see at least one long touchdown pass today, and I'm going to go with Milton Wright on the other end of that, Love so that we'll see. All right, one more home game coming up. It's uh, Thanksgiving weekend against Indiana. Uh, some tickets still available for that, and we hope that you will join us as the Boilermakers try to recapture the old oaken bucket. Until then and until uh, next week when we go to the horseshoe for Kelly Kitchell and for Pete Quinn, I'm Tim Newton. Thanks for joining us. Boiler up. Boiler up.